Hi, my name is Doris Lee, and I'm a product manager that leads our Python developer tools and experience at Snowflake. In this video, you'll learn about what Pandas on Snowflake is, the benefits of using it, and a demo of how you can get started with using Pandas on Snowflake. So Pandas on Snowflake is a simple, unified, and familiar interface that gives Python developers the flexibility and convenience of Pandas together with the power of Snowflake. You can easily work with your Snowflake data, bringing them in from files, save them back as results on your tables and views and so on. Uh, you can also develop robust Pandas pipeline at all scales uh, from prototype to production. Using Pandas on Snowflake, you can also unlock Snowflake's powerful analytics function using your familiar flexible Pandas API. And we'll take a look at what each of these components um, entails in our demo video. Awesome, so let's take a look at a demo of how this all works together. So here I have my Snowflake notebook opened. You can see here I have my notebook interface. This is an interface for you to run both Python and SQL queries all inside the Snowflake UI. And see that on my packages pane, I was able to add the modem package as part of one of the packages in the dropdown. And then Snowflake notebooks also come built in with Snowpark Python. So we have all of those packages added in and then we can now import them. So as part of the Snowflake notebook, we make it super easy for you to add in packages that's pre-built into the libraries. And with these two lines of import, you're now ready to start using Pandas on Snowflake. And so with in the Snowflake notebook environment, we also make it really easy for you to connect to Snowflake. All you have to do is run these two lines of code to get your active session. You don't need to put in any username or credential because you're already logged into your Snowside environment. You can get your active session. And so for this demo, we're going to be working with synthetic data set of 50 million rows. This is a revenue transactions table, which I'm generating here. It's very simple. It's got some transaction ID, it's got the date, and it's got the revenue column, which is a bunch of floats. And so I'm generating this table has now been created. And this also kind of shows you that, you know, how easy it is to actually go between the SQL cells and the Python cells in your notebook. So this is one of the features that I love about our Snowflake notebook. So one of the most common approaches that we see when people are working with their Snowflake data using Pandas is that we see that people pull their data out of Snowflake via the Snowflake Python connector using something like a two pandas or a fetch pandas all. And so you could see these lines of code here. This is what it kind of looks like. Now I'm going to go ahead and first run this cell. This cell is going to take a while to run. And so I'm going to first run this cell and then kind of go back to what's actually happening here. So there are two common approaches to reading data from Snowflake to pandas. Um, the naive approach that we see most commonly used is uh, essentially you're pulling your data out of Snowflake using the Snowflake Python connector, using something like a two pandas or a fetch pandas all. But that comes with a lot of challenges. So when you pull your data, out to work with it in memory using pandas, you lose all of the rich performance and governance benefits of having your data in Snowflake, which can often lead to out of memory errors or slow single threaded uh, sort of processing when working with regular pandas in memory. With pandas on Snowflake, you can continue to work with your Python code, your pandas code, and so on. And what we do is we take your code and automatically transpile that to run it on Snowflake so that you get the benefits of distributed pandas at scale without having to worry about you know, managing or tuning your compute infrastructure and managing all this uh, memory requirement. So you can take your pandas code from prototype to production. Now let's hop back to the notebook and see if this has finished running. Awesome. So we saw that this is now finished running. What it's actually done is it's taken this table and pulled all of the data into memory. That took around 66 seconds, almost a minute, just to be able to pull that data into memory. And so with Pandas on Snowflake, this is a much more efficient process. With Pandas on Snowflake, all you have to do is use the pd.readSnowflake command which essentially reads your table into data frame a DF variable that you can start working with it using pandas on Snowflake. So we're going to run this and bam, it just finished. It took less than a second. It's, you know, 0.4 second compared to what we saw earlier, which was 66 seconds. Because with the pd.read snowflake approach, we're not actually reading all the data into memory. This is kind of just kind of a reference to your table that you can start working with it right away. And so this is really the power of sort of read Snowflake. It allows you to very efficiently kind of work with these large tables without pulling all of the data into memory. And one of the things I also like about 
with Snowflake command is that you can not only put in just names of your Snowflake table, you could put in, you know, full on queries. Um, in this case, I have, you know, select star query, which performs some aggregation and so on that I'm essentially putting in into my pd.read snowflake. The other thing I also can do is let's say I have a view. Uh, let's say I, I've defined the same query, but, but instead as a view, I can also use pd.read snowflake to read that view. And so this is a really easy way if you're an analyst, if you're working with views that are shared across other, you know, folks in your organization, you can easily access your Snowflake views, tables, dynamic tables, iceberg tables, and so on, all with this single pd.read snowflake command. And so now I have this df variable I can start working with. And so one of the things I love about pandas is just how easy it is to kind of visualize my data, take a look at like, you know, the first couple rows using something like, you know, df.head, taking a look at the shape of the data, or even doing something like describe. Describe kind of shows me the min and max as well as other kind of profile information, you know, the percentiles of the quantitative variables that are in my data set, in this case, revenue. And so this is a really easy way for me to profile and get a sense of the data set overview. The bread and butter of pandas is really around the data transformation, data cleaning, and so on. So I have this date column that I can do p .to date time on in order to get the dates. I can also do things like filtering. So for example, I can filter to get the data from the last seven days based on the max date, the max date being the latest date. And so here I've been able to filter the data frame down to data that's in the last seven days. And that resulted in a data frame called filter df. Now I can print that out to get a sense of the length of the data frame before and after the filtering command. What that will do is that will run the filtering command. And you can see that initially we had 50 uh, million rows and now we're down to around 39,000 rows. And so as you could see, everything that I'm doing here looks and feels like pandas. Here we have the filtering command that looks like pandas. We have the max, I have the length, you know, two date time, all these operations looks and feels like pandas. But the best part about using pandas on Snowflake is that it automatically translates whatever you're writing in pandas into a SQL that is executed directly on the Snowflake engine, which is how we're able to get to this faster performance when working with a large data set. So for example, the 50 million row data set that we're working with. And to actually show you this in action, I'm actually going to go on to our left-hand side here and take a look at our query history. So I just opened up my query history in a different tab. And you could see here that these are all the SQL queries that are being generated based on the pandas operation that I just performed using Snowpark pandas. These essentially correspond to things like the max, the filtering and so forth that you saw with pandas. And so with that, you can verify that, you know, all of these pandas command that you're running is indeed getting translated to SQL. And you could see all of that in the query history pane. So finally, let's say, you know, you, you're able to either build some features, perform some data cleaning, build your pipeline, do some sort of reshaping of your data. And you're, you're done with all of those operations. Here, we just showed a couple of simple ones. But if you actually go into our documentation page, you can take a look at the full list of supported APIs in Snowpark Pandas. Okay, so now that you've been able to build out your pipeline and workflows and so on, you might want to save your result back to a Snowflake table, a view or other files and so on. And so you can do that very easily with pandas on Snowflake. So you might recall that we have our filtered DF data frame from earlier. Um, we can use the to Snowflake command to essentially save that data frame as a table. In this case, the table is called filtered revenue transaction. We're going to replace whatever table is there earlier. And then that's how I would save a table, uh, my data frame, as a Snowflake table. And so just to verify that the table has been created, I'm going to really run a very easy uh, sort of select star query to show you that, hey, the table has indeed been created. This is what it looks like. This is the filtered data frame that I had earlier.
Now, you could also save your pipeline and transformation as a view. Uh, so very similarly, you could do to view to save it as a view. And then, uh, you know, if we take a look at the SQL statement, the, the view definition that is generated as part of these transformations, you could actually see that here. So here I'm going to use the get DDL command. Um, and this is the SQL query that corresponds to the transformation that I had earlier, which essentially is my view definition. And so I can then use pd.readSnowflake again to read in that view. And similarly here, I can see the view data frame that has been created. And so just as a kind of a little bonus section, I'm also going to show you how you can read in files that you have, either that's a CSV file, Parquet file, Excel file that you either have in you know, either a local file location or a stage file. And we actually have on our documentation page a full list of the IO functionalities that are supported. And so here I have this CSV file that is in my S3 bucket. I'm first going to create an external stage it calls Frostbytes, pointing to this URL. Um, so this is my S3 bucket with kind of my, my CSV data. And then once I've been able to create this stage file, I can use this at syntax to essentially refer to that stage location. And then in the analytics folder, I have this CSV file called menu item aggregate underscore view dot CSV. And so just like I'm familiar with in terms of like, you know, pandas IO functionality, I can use the PD dot read CSV command to essentially read in the CSV file that exists in my S3 location to my menu DF, menu data frame, and essentially print out the menu DF to take a look at what's in this data set. So I could see, you know, all the names of different food trucks, menu items, and so on. So yeah, this is a very quick kind of demo of the really awesome things that you could do with pandas on Snowflake. To recap, in this video, uh, we saw how Pandas on Snowflake lets you build flexible, robust Python pipelines directly in Snowflake. We saw a demo of how easy it was to get started with Pandas on Snowflake. With minimal code changes, uh, you can take your existing Pandas workflow and scale them up to larger data sets to run directly in the Snowflake engine. Pandas on Snowflake brings in the flexibility and familiarity of the Pandas API to the power and scale of Snowflake so that it provides a simple, unified interface for Python developers to work efficiently with large data sets, all without moving your data out of Snowflake. Want to learn more about Pandas on Snowflake? Check out some of the links below to try out this demo on your own and learn more. And don't forget to subscribe to our Snowflake Developers channel for the latest videos uh, designed for leveling up your Snowflake skills. See you in the next video.